Hello everybody, so today we're going to be going over imaginary functions. So what I have written here is Euler's formula, and I'll put a link to a proof, there are plenty of them on YouTube already. One thing you may have heard is that e to the i pi is equal to minus 1, and it, this really derives from this equation here. And so ultimately what we've just done is we've replaced theta with pi, and then we'll notice that sine of pi is zero, so that's going to get rid of our imaginary number. And that's ultimately why this is a real number, and cosine of pi is just minus one. I and minus one are both important numbers because we can take these to the imaginary power, and they give us and they yield real answers. And we can prove this using the formula we just derived. So ultimately, at this point, what we can do is we can just take both sides to the i power, and then we'll notice you can multiply powers together. This just gives us e to the minus pi equals minus 1 to the i power. Now, proving i to the i is slightly more difficult. What we need to do is we need to get a second i in here, and we're going to do that by taking the square root of minus 1, because the square root of minus 1 is equal to i. So we now have i is equal to e. Now, the square root is equal to the 1 half power, and you multiply exponents, so that's the same as e to the i pi halves power. Same thing here, we can take these both to the i power, that gives us minus pi halves, which is equal to point two zero seven eight seven nine five seven. It's such a gorgeous number, I have it memorized. And then if we we're able to prove this, then we can also prove that the ln of i is equal to i pi halves. These are all kind of in a unit together, all kind of interconnected. So now what we want to do is delve into the trigonometric era. We can replace theta with a negative theta. So let's add a unit circle to visualize this. So if you think about it, theta is somewhere up here. Now we take a negative theta, we're going to just change the sine to a negative value, but the cosine should stay the same because it's an equal distance from minus 1. So this is equal to cosine of theta minus i sine of theta. So then we can just add these two together, or this comes up here, which gives us e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is equal to 2 cosine theta. i sine crosses out. So now we can simplify in terms of cosine, and we'll notice that we get it in terms of i times theta, so we plug in a imaginary number for cosine, we'll get a real answer, which leaves us with e plus 1 over e over 2. So now let's go back to this step, and let's imagine that we subtracted it instead. And in this case, you're going to get 2 i sine theta, and the cosines are going to cross out, so we can solve in terms of sine. And this is what sine of i is equal to. Anyways, this was a kind of hammy video because there's a bunch of arbitrary information about imaginary numbers. I promise in the next video we'll get into more difficult proof. Thank you and come back for this following video.